Hello and welcome to another exciting CG Cookie tutorial. I'm Chris Bailey and I'm going to be showing you how we can make this really cool architectural scene really easily using Blender. Now this tutorial is inspired by the recent course on CG Cookie called Sessions. And the first block of tutorials in the Sessions series is called Minimalism. And Intramel takes you through a series of Blender projects and each one is designed to be created in two hours or less. And the whole concept of the series is underpinned with this idea of you know, computer graphics is really overwhelming. It could be this massive thing and it seems like it could be impossible to learn at all or to get good at it. But if you take this measured approach, you can really begin to build up your skills incrementally and still create really impactful renders and really amazing art, uh, even when you just have two hours to work with. So it's a really, really cool course. I highly recommend it. Now this particular tutorial today is inspired by one of the sections of the course where Kit takes a look at brutalist architecture as inspiration and creates a really cool hallway design with some dramatic lighting. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go shift A and create a camera. I'm going to zero out the rotation. So if you just click on the camera and then click on the properties uh, box there on the tab and hit zero for all those. And then we're going to rotate X 90 degrees and grab Y and grab Z. And then I'm going to go shift A and create a mesh cube. And I know we're basically like recreating the default scene that we deleted, but never mind. I'm going to go to edge mode so I can hit number two in your keyboard, or you can just click up here and I'll select this edge and I'll grab X and just bring it out. Now, the thing that really kind of defines brutalist architecture is these really bold, uh, overbearing, oppressive shapes, massive blocks, lots of blank concrete, uh, unrendered concrete, like really kind of, yeah, terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying architecture. That's the point. So we're going to have these giant angular pillars in our scene. I'm going to G and Z to grab Z and just bring it up. So it's sitting here on the the the, uh, the floor and I'll grab X and bring it back over here. Now I want this to be kind of evenly spaced. So what I'm going to actually do actually instead of bringing it over on the X, I'm going to hit zero on the X to center it up. I'm going to go into edit mode, hit A to select all and grab X and move this back within edit mode. Okay, so you can see the uh, origin is still there in the middle. Now what I can do is I come over to the wrench, add modifier and add the mirror modifier. This will mirror it. Now it's equally, you know, equidistant from this point and I can go back in edit mode and grab X and move it around to kind of get it the right position. Now I've got this nice kind of symmetrical um, balance composition uh, without having to do it manually. Then I'm going to add an array modifier to this. We're going to come to the array modifier and we are going to go into the Y direction. So I'm going to zero out the X and set Y to one. And then I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. So there's some separation. And then I'm going to increase my count a lot. We're going to go way up, maybe to 20. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my camera. I'm going to open up the side panel. You can hit in to do that, or you can just click on the little, the little arrow. And then I'm going to click here on the view tab and I will click uh, under view lock. We're going to do camera to view. This will lock the camera to our view. So as we change our view with our normal uh, view controls, it moves the camera along with us. So we're just going to line this up right down the center here. I'm going to go to the property tabs, click the camera, and I'm going to center it on the X. That's what I wanted. I will bring us up a little bit on the Z. And I will zero out the Z rotation and the Y rotation and just keep the X locked at 90. So a nice kind of symmetrical clear view. I'm also going to come to my camera and go down to viewport display and I'm going to turn up pass bar two and that will just darken the outside of my frame so I can focus on my render and see what it looks like. Cool. I'm going to go shift A mesh plane and scale up this plane, scale Y. And I'm just going to get that to Intersect, yeah, it's intersecting, good. And then I'm gonna shift D and Z, and we're gonna bring it up. And I'll just have it come up here like that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sun lamp and use that to really light this. We're gonna light this whole scene with just one light. And the idea behind this is to show you that you, know, you can do a lot with a little. So you don't need a ton of stuff in Blender to make really cool images, as long as you've got really clear design ideas uh, that you're working with. So. This one light is going to do all the heavy lifting for us, but I want to kind of block out sections so I don't have light across everything. And I want to darken this entryway, so like the part that's closest to camera, and I want to darken the bit that's far away and kind of the light come through the side of these, um, these pillars here. So to do that, I'm going to 
come over here to my side panel and then untick lock camera to view. And I'm going to pop out of my camera and I'm going to excuse, shift a mesh cube and scale this up, go into edit mode, go to face mode and select this front face and hit X and delete. And then I'm going to hit a to select all and S to scale down a little bit. I'm just going to center that up. And this is going to be like a shadow box basically. So I'm going to use this to block the light here at the entrance. And then I'm going to shift D and Y and then rotate Z 180 and just to bring this over here as well so we can block the light out on this side. I might scale this one up a lot. So this way when we have our light, it's going to be blocked from coming into this area and this area we're just going to get it cutting through here um, and that will allow us to then create some nice fall off into darkness. All right, let's hit zero to jump back into our camera. And our cube is now intersecting our cameras. So let's just grab that on the Y, bring it back so the camera is back in place. Okay, cool. We're going to go ahead and switch over to render view. Now we're going to be doing this render with cycles because uh, EV can't quite pull off the look that we want for this. We want to have the light coming in from the side, bouncing around and filling the space. So we're going to need to use cycles for this. So let's go ahead and come over here. We're going to switch from EV to cycles. Let's switch to the GPU compute. And I'm going to come to my world tab and I'm just going to turn it to black. I'm going to turn on denoise. Um, if you've got a graphics card that enables this, um, you'll be able to take this. If not, it's okay. It's nothing to the world, but it's just nice. It helps you work a little bit quicker because it will resolve the image fast. Now we can't really see anything yet. So we're going to go shift a, and we're going to create our light sunlight. And I'm just going to rotate this thing up like this until I start to see some light. Now, sun lamps don't matter where they're located. You can see as I hit G and move it around, it doesn't change the lighting at all. I am going to put it off to the side just because that makes sense to my mind of where the sun is coming from. And I will rotate this thing on the Y. I'm going to come over to the light properties tab and I'm going to turn the strength up to like 20. I'm going to take the angle down. What the angle does is it creates sharp uh, shadows basically. So the bigger the angle, the softer the fall off on the shadows. And typically speaking, if you have like a really large light source like the sun, it's going to have really sharp shadows. So a smaller angle. Okay. I'm going to take my sun and I'm going to rotate it on the Z a little bit. So it's not straight in line with these pillars. So I'm going to rotate Z. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to actually stretch these guys out a bit. I'm going to scale them on the Y just to make the pillars a little bit thicker. I feel like I'm getting too much repetition. These are a bit too close for me. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to reduce the relative offset just to bring them closer together. My roof is a bit too wide. It's cutting off the light a lot. I'm not quite getting the steep angle that I want. So I'm going to scale this down on the Y or on the X. And I'm going to rotate that sun just a little bit more. Next thing I want to do is create a bit of a concrete texture that I'm going to put on these pillars. Now I'm going to jump over to Polyhaven for this. Polyhaven is an excellent website. You can get all kinds of free open source um, textures and models and stuff. So we're going to go over to textures and browse textures. I'm going to go to concrete and just have a browse through and find something that I want. I think this concrete wall is actually going to work out just the way I want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and down this. I'm going to download this at a high res. I'm going to go about 8K for this, but you can play around with it. You don't necessarily have to go that high um, depending on the size of your final render, but I'm going to play with 8K. So you just click to download that. Once you've downloaded it and we are going to go file and append, we're going to bring in that collection. And you're going to navigate to that Blender file that we've just downloaded. It's Concrete Layers 02 8K. And I'm going to click Append. That will take me inside the Blender file. Now I can see all the things that are inside that Blender file. And I want to go to Collection. And I'm going to just bring in this top level collection. Click Append. You can see it adds into this sphere and this plane. I can just hide those. And what it's also done is it's brought in the materials. So now I can click on my pillar and I can come over here to the Material tab. And go to this drop down, and there it is. So I can just assign that to each bit and bring my floor up. Now I'm going to grab the cube that's behind my camera, the one that's blocking the light here from this front area. I'm going to grab it on the Y and I'm just going to move it until I get a little bit of light coming in. Now I want to take this material, and right now the material is too big. I need to kind of scale it down so that it's much smaller and it feels like a much larger uh, space. So I'm going to go over to my shader editor and I'll come here. And this is the concrete layer. So too, you can see it's set up here with the UV coordinate and then into a mapping coordinate. And this is just for convenience. You can rotate it. Um, and I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to take it up to maybe 20. 
try 10. He's a bit too big. And I'm going to rotate it because it's these nice strips. And I think it'll look good if those strips are kind of going horizontally. So I'm going to take the Z, rotate 90, and you can see it rotates that. 10's still a bit too big. I might go to 5. Now I want the ceiling concrete to be going a different way. Right now it feels like it's stretched out too far. I'm going to come over and click this double paper icon. This will make a copy of this material. So now it's its own unique material assigned to this. It's not connected to the pillars of the floor. And so I can change the scale values just for this particular bit. And I'm going to get rid of the 90 rotation just to make it go across the ceiling. And I might make this a lot smaller. And I'll select my floor and I'll assign that same one to the floor. And I want there to be a bit of shine to this material. Um, and But I also kind of like the roughness settings that came with the material as well. So I'm going to add a, a little bit of something extra. I'm going to come over to the clear coat and I'm going to turn clear coat up. And I'm going to take the roughness for the clear coat and turn it up as well until I get a nice kind of blurred reflection. I'm also going to select my pillars and I'm going to turn my bump map up to five just to really bring out the strength of that texture. Now, I feel like this edge is a bit too crisp, Link's thing, and I feel like we could add a bit more realism if we have a bit of a bevel to it. So I'm just going to add that in as a modifier. I'm going to come to my modifier stack, and I've got my mirror and my array, but I'm going to add this bevel first. So I'm going to drag it up. You just click the little uh, interactive tab here, and then allow you to drag this up, change the order. So the bevel's first. And with this bevel, I'm going to set the amount to something like 0 0.001. And I'll set the segments up to two. I might just pop out of rendered mode just to make sure that looks good. All right, I'm going to set segments to three and 0 0.01 seems to look pretty good. You'll have different um, numbers because of the scale of your model might be different to mine. So just adjust it until it looks, looks good. Okay, now just to kind of increase the visual interest for this center area, what I've done is I've brought the back light blocking cube forward just to kind of bring more into shadow. So we've got a larger black spot. And I want to take one of these guys, um, and I'm going to shift E to duplicate, and then I'm going to grab Y, go into edit mode, and scale X. And that's going to extend the size of these pillars so that they start to intersect and create this nice triangle shape. I'm going to get out of edit mode and then just scale Y and squash it down, or scale X, sorry. And I'll place it just there, just so it's visible at the end of that hallway. I think that looks really cool. Now what's so cool about a scene like this is because it's lit with just one light, we can actually just animate that light to move and you get this really cool light ray effect passing through the space. And there you go, our final render. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot. If you did, please hit that like button and leave us a comment. Let us know what kind of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. Don't forget to subscribe as well to find out when we have new tutorials dropping all the time. And check out cgcookie.com and the minimalism course, which inspired this tutorial. I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, have a fantastic week. See ya.